The problem with streaming cameras is that they are stationary. Once you mount them, they don't move. So when you celebrate a victory royale with your audience, the camera isn't able to capture it because you're out of frame. Well, there is one solution. You could pick up one of those super fancy AI webcams with a built-in gimbal and AI tracking. Pretty simple fix, right? Except the quality doesn't come near a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So why would you downgrade? Surely there's gotta be a solution that gives you the best of both worlds. Well, there is. It's called the Obsbot Tail Air. In fact, I upgraded from my Sony a6600 and this is officially now my streaming camera on my main setup. And it's not cheap. Let's talk about it. So the reason why the Obsbot Tail Air has such incredible picture quality is because it's able to capture up to 4K at 30 FPS with really good low light performance thanks to the f1.8 aperture. They basically stitched in a Sony lens inside of an AI webcam. Only this time, the AI is much more advanced with the Tail Air. To start off, it's completely hands-free. Just like with the other AI cameras, you can control this with hand gestures. Holding up the L sign will either zoom the camera in or out, but if you hold up both hands together, you have a more accurate way of controlling the zoom. Holding up your palm will enable and disable the track system, which by the way has been greatly improved. It's able to track very accurately and quickly. And if you want to start or stop recording, the gesture for that is the OK sign. The camera will make a beep sound and blink three times, indicating that it recognized the gesture and it will continue to blink slowly while it's recording. It stores all the footage on the included 256 gigabyte micro SD card. And the fact that it's wireless transforms this into the ultimate vlogging camera. It has a quarter inch thread underneath so you can prop this on a tripod and take it anywhere you go. And when you're back home, you can slap this back on your setup. I do however have a difficult time sliding a damn SD card inside the slot. You have to push it pretty deep inside for it to click. And unfortunately my nails are not strong enough so I always end up using a credit card to slot this all the way in. The camera itself isn't huge, like this is it. It's fairly light, weighing only 13 ounces, and it comes in this protective case, making it very easy to travel with. So the Tel Air does have a built-in microphone, but it isn't the best. Especially if you're recording from a distance. The further you are from the camera, the worse the audio is gonna sound. It does have an audio jack, however, which allows you to plug in a dedicated microphone, which is what I highly recommend if you're gonna be streaming and recording with sound. The USB-C port in the back is used to charge the camera, which will take 90 minutes to complete from zero to 100% while the camera is powered off. And as far as usage time, it will last 154 minutes while recording in 1080p 30 FPS. But I found that recording in 4K will drain it a lot faster, and I was able to barely squeeze in an hour of recording non-stop. And then finally, underneath the micro SD card slot is a micro HDMI, allowing you to plug in a larger display, which can come in handy depending on the content you are trying to record. For example, I found this to be extremely useful when I'm streaming PC builds. I was able to hook up my 32 inch 4K monitor directly to the Tel Air 2, and I was able to monitor what I'm shooting. Now, even though I use this mostly to stream at my setup, it's actually designed to do so much more. Since the camera has a two axis gimbal, it's able to follow you around with the built-in AI tracking, and it's much more polished than the other AI cameras I've tested on the channel. It's noticeably more accurate, and it's able to keep up no matter how fast I was moving around. You can also control the speed directly on the app itself, which I'll go over in a bit. The only time it's given me some problems is when I walk out of frame. The camera will do its best to continue scanning for a person to track, and sometimes it gets carried away. But other than that, it's pretty damn spot on actually. Same with the auto exposure. It does a pretty good job balancing the highlights and the shadows so that it's not overexposed. But you do have complete control over the camera settings. After all, this is a Sony sensor, so you can switch to manual and adjust the ISO, shutter, EV, and a ton of other settings, which I'll go over more in the app very soon. So the app is basically what's gonna give you complete control over the Tel Air. Once you download and install the app, all you have to do is sync it with the camera. You do have the option of connecting via Wi-Fi or cellular, but if you pick up an ethernet adapter, you can hardwire the connection for a more stable and smooth signal transmission. Personally, on Wi-Fi, I didn't experience any major issues. In fact, I was impressed with how responsive the camera was with very little to no lag. Tapping and holding onto the screen will let you adjust the angle manually, but if you wanted to track an object or a person, just double tap on it. 
It does a pretty good job tracking the object or person that you want, but if that person goes out of frame even for a split second, it will track the next object by default until the original person comes back in frame and then it will switch back over. Using a built-in AI, it will determine if it should zoom in or keep it at a wide shot. Basically, if you're far away from the camera, it will automatically zoom in, and if you're close, it will switch to close up, just to name a few examples. It's constantly running multiple algorithms to decide what distance works best for the current scenario. In addition to that, you can select how the camera behaves by choosing between five different presets. So if you're constantly walking around and you want your audience to see everything around you, the wide preset makes the most sense. If you're demonstrating something, half body would be a better pick. And then if you're streaming games while sitting down, then obviously the close up would be the best. Speaking of presets, you have the option of setting up to three different presets, which is ideal in a teaching scenario. Just move the camera to any location you want and tap on the P plus button to save that location. When you have all your presets saved, just tap on either one of them to quickly switch the camera. And finally, I do want to talk about the NDI feature because this is how you're able to stream directly with the Obsbot Tel Air. For those who aren't familiar with NDI, it stands for Network Device Interface, and it's arguably the format choice for vast majority of users in live events and streaming applications. So after obtaining an NDI license key, which is purchased separately, you're able to activate it with the Obsbot Tel Air and stream directly to any streaming platform you want. So this is how I set it up with my PC in case anyone is interested. After registering my NDI key, I downloaded and installed NDI tools. Then I launched Studio Monitor. After I launched the app, I navigate to the menu up top and simply find the Obsbot Tel Air and I click on it. As long as the camera and my PC are on the same network, it will automatically connect to it in real time. Then it's just a matter of opening up an NDI compatible streaming software and adding that source. I'm using OBS Studio because it's the easiest and I'm the most familiar with it. In the sources tab, I hit the plus sign and I add the NDI source. But do keep in mind that you will need the NDI plugin for this to show up on your OBS. I'll drop a link to it down below. Next, I'm going to name it Facecam so it's easier to find. Then under the source name, I locate and click on OBS Bot Tell Air and then hit the OK button. After all that, it shows up on the overlay and then I can resize it and crop it how I want while still having access to the camera features with my gestures. Meaning I can still zoom in and out stop the tracking and even start and end recording using my hands. My only gripe with this is the lag. There is noticeable lag shooting in 4K 30 FPS. It was so bad that it looks like 5 FPS with all the stuttering. So I had to go into the settings and downgrade to 1080p at 60 FPS, which did improve quite a bit, but it was still lagging. So ultimately I lowered it down to 30 FPS, which got rid of the lag altogether. So at 1080p at 30 FPS, you're able to get a very smooth and steady stream. Regardless, I'm still able to stream at 4K 30 FPS without any issues because it's connected directly to my PC via USB-C cable. With the live streaming market expected to reach 4.26 billion by 2028, I do think that the Obsbot Tel Air is able to capitalize on the explosive growth. With that said, this isn't made for the average Joe content creator or streamer. Priced at $500, this is definitely targeting a smaller niche of serious content creators and streamers who want to take advantage of this innovative tech like AI tracking, for example. That is definitely going to push them ahead of the competition that doesn't have access to these features. But anyways, I'll drop a link to it down below if you guys want to check it out. I'm definitely excited to implement this in my new setup uh, early next year. So make sure to stick around for that. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.